the researcher is always interested to find out whether the findings what he or she has received are applicable to the large population. This we call as generalization and for this we use variety of statistics. We know that the tools, statistical tools which we use to analyze the sample are called statistics and the population is called parameter. Today we will see one such statistical tool which is chi-square. Chi-square is spelled as chi square and it is denoted as lambda square. To show you the similarity it is y letter upside down. See how it looks. While we collect the data there are different types of data which we have already seen. Some data is categorical data, some data is numerical data. The data can be categorized or classified into various areas. If they are categorical or numerical, we will see how do we achieve those type of data. There are questions which we ask generally which elicit answers which tell us whether the data is categorical or numerical. If a question is asked what is your gender, then male or female. So, you will say female. That data is called categorical because these are two categories. But if you ask a question, how many schools did you visit today? Then you will say 3, 4 or 8 whatever. So, that is the number. This is a numerical data. But see this data with another question. If I ask you how tall are you? Then you will say 160 centimeters or 170 centimeters. So, though this is numerical, these are two different types of data. The first one when you are giving the answer of 3 or 4 schools is discrete data. Whereas, the height which you are saying 160 centimeters, this is called continuous data. Now, you will see that how do we get this data? The discrete data is achieved by counting. You count the schools 1, 2, 3, 4. Whereas, the height or weight is measured. So, when we measure something, we get continuous data, when we count something we get discrete data. Today we will see a statistical tool which is chi-square as we said earlier. Now the chi-square will help you to see the categorical data what you have received for different groups is really showing you a significant difference or not. Chi-square generally is used for testing hypothesis. It can be used for testing the hypothesis when you use categorical data. Categorical data is can be achieved through tallies. So, you have tallies in one group, you have tallies in another group so that you have number. This number is categorical number. So, you can use that to see whether the difference is significant or not you can use chi-square. We must know that chi-square can be used only on numbers and not for percentages. When you set up a null hypothesis, first you will set up alternative hypothesis H1 and you will convert that into H0 that is null hypothesis that there is no significant difference in group 1 and group 2 or category 1 and category 2 or you may say that expected frequency and observed frequency. We are seeing that whether this difference is significant or not and for that we must know what is the expected frequency. Now, if you say that the probability of getting answers exactly same in both groups that means you are expecting 50 50 percent if sample size is 18 then you expect 9 in this and 9 in that. So, you have to have some expectations for computing your chi-square and this expectation will come from your hypothesis. Let us see what are different ways by which we can compute chi-square. The simplest way of computing chi-square is using contingency table. This contingency table is called 2 by 2 contingency table. Now, see this how it is denoted. In this table we have variable 1 and we have variable 2 and in each we have type of data, data type 1 and data type 2. So, data type 1 is giving us category 1 and 2, data type 2 also is giving us category 2. Now, see how it is depicted. In this 2 by 2 contingency table, we have data type 1, 
category 1 which is denoted by A. Data type 1 and category 2 is denoted by C. Data type 2 and category 1 is denoted by B and data type 2 and category 2 is denoted by D. So, we have 4 cells A, B, C and D. Now, how do we find out? We want to find out whether category 1 and 2 there is a difference or type 1 and type 2 has a difference. How do we compute chi square? For this, you will have a total column on the right hand side which gives A plus B and C plus D. Similarly, you will have another row, the third row which will also give you the total of A and C, A plus C and B and D that is B plus D. So, if you have the total of all four A plus B plus C plus D, actually it is N, the total sample. So, it is denoted by capital N. Now, chi square can be computed by using the formula chi square is equal to N into AD minus BC whole square upon A plus B into C plus D into A plus C into B plus D. Let us take one example. There are two groups boys and girls. They differ in their gender. Now, we are expecting them to excel in certain test. So, you have a norm. So, we have two categories, those who are above the norm and those who are below the norm. Now, you have the number, number of boys in one cell, number of girls in another cell. Similarly, number of boys in above norm and number of girls in above norm. So, you see that there are four cells and in each cell, there is a number given. We want to see whether boys and girls differ significantly and for that, we will compute chi square. Now, you have the value for A, B, C and D. Now, A plus B is equal to 35, C plus D is equal to 45, A plus C is equal to 35 and B plus D is 45. Now, A plus B plus C plus D total N is 80. There are 80 students out of which 35 are boys and 45 are girls. If we use the formula for chi square, and substitute the values in it, you will get n is 80. So, 80 into bracket 375 that is 15 multiplied by 25 a c minus b d that is 20 multiplied by 20 is 400. So, 375 minus 400 whole square. So, 25 square is 625, you have to multiply it by 80. There are four values a plus b, c plus d, a plus c and b plus d you multiply all four by substituting their values and see what you get. So, after computing it, you will get the value of lambda square. Lambda square is equal to 0 0.201. Now, this is the value of chi square. We want to see whether this value is giving us a significant difference or it has come by chance. So, we have to refer to table E that is for chi square. In any statistics book, you will find variety of tables. So, table E is generally for chi square. In this table, in the first column, you have degrees of freedom and on the top horizontal, you will have the probability. Now, we have to decide what should be the probability. We have already said that we should go for two confidence levels, one is 0 0.05 and other is 0 0.01. Of course, we know that there are other values of probability 0 0.1, 0 0.2, but we are not really very confident to say that 90 percent of the time this will happen or 80 percent of the time this will happen. So, as a researcher, one is confident in saying that 99 percent of the time this will happen or 95 percent of the time this will happen. So, generally we select the value of probability as 0 0.05 or 0 0.01. 0 0.01 is highest level or higher level than 0 0.05. Now, our lambda square or chi square value is 0 0.2. First thing we have to find out is degrees of freedom and degrees of freedom we have it is 2 by 2 contingency table. So, rho minus 1 multiplied by column minus 1. So, r minus 1 into c minus 1. So, there are two columns and there are two rows. So, 2 minus 1 into 2 minus 1 is 1. So, for us degrees of freedom is 1. Now, you refer to table E, first thing you have to see degrees of freedom 1 and you see across. What do you see? Where does point 2 come? 
If you refer to the table, you will see this 0.2 value of chi square which is obtained falls between 0.5 and 0.7. That means, if you interpolate it will come in between these two. So, that means about 0.6. So, the probability is 0.6 that means 60 percent of the time it will come by chance. So, we do not have confidence in this value and we cannot confidently reject the null hypothesis saying that boys do not differ with girls. But please remember we are not supposed to accept the null hypothesis, we will retain that null hypothesis till we get substantial data. This was to find out by 2 by 2 contingency table. Now, let us see if you have a null hypothesis which gives you an expectations of certain level of observations. So, we call that frequency observed and we call that frequency expected. So, expected frequency and observed frequency. Expected frequency was say 50 percent. So, what you observed that is called frequency which is observed. Is there a difference? And if there is a difference, is it by chance or is it by virtue of being different? That means, whether we can reject the null hypothesis confidently or we have to retain it. Now, let us see a table for chi square where we have expected frequency. Let us see this example, you have 10 students and when you give them certain test where you expected there is no difference. But what you got? Boys got 7, girls got 3. There were 7 boys and 3 girls. Now, you want to see whether this difference is significant or not. What is the expected frequency? You are saying it is equal. So, that means there should have been 5 boys and 5 girls. So, expected frequency is 5 and 5 and observed frequency is 7 and 3. Now, see how it is denoted. It is again 2 by 2 table where we have F O is 7 and 3 and F E as 5 and 5. Now, we will have to see the difference between these two. So, 7 minus 5 is 2, 3 minus 5 is minus 2. Because the number is less, it is a small sample, we have to make a correction of 0.5. So, this will be 2 minus 0.5 is 1.5 and on both sides it will be 1.5. So, now we have F O minus F E with correction. Now, we have to square it F O minus F E whole square. So, we have 1.5 as a difference, we have to square it that square will be 2.25. The formula for chi square is F O minus F E whole square upon F E. So, for every column you will find that. So, 2.25 upon expected frequency is 5. So, it becomes 0.45. So, on both sides you get 0.45. So, what is the total chi square? It is 0.9. So, you have a chi square value as 0.9. Now, you would like to find out whether this value is significant or not. As we said earlier, we have the confidence level as 0.05 and 0.01. So, we refer to table E and table E. So, what is the degrees of freedom? Degrees of freedom is 1. So, under the degrees of freedom 1, if you see, where does our value stand? That is 0.9. So, our value of chi square 0.9 falls between 0.3 and 0.5. If you interpolate, you will get the value of probability 0.356. See, 0.356, we are interested in 0.05 at least. And here, you are getting 35 percent of the times, it will not be so. So, naturally, we cannot reject the null hypothesis with confidence. So, we retain the null hypothesis. Let us see one more example, which has two traits, but you have three categories in each. So, trait 1 has high, medium and low. Similarly, trait B has high, medium and low. So, now actually you have 3 by 3 matrix. That means, there are 9 cells. This contingency table is of 3 by 3. And in each cell, there would be some number. You want to find out whether these two traits differ significantly as per their categories. So, we have to set up a null hypothesis that they do not differ significantly and then we have to find out. There is a null hypothesis has to be tested. Now, let us see the values. We have high, medium and low for trait A and high, medium and low for trait B. 
So, the group which is high on trait A and trait B has number as 15. So, that means there are 15 persons who are high on trait A and also high on trait B. Similarly, there are other numbers in remaining 8 cells. So, medium A and high B is 30, low on A and high on B is 25. So, similarly you see all values in 9 cells. Like we had done for 2 by 2 contingency table, similarly you have to find out the total on the last column, the total is 70, 100 and 80. Similarly, total of trait A high, medium and low is 55, 100 and 95 which will give you n is equal to 250. So, there were 250 people in the sample which are distributed in 9 cells as we have shown. Now, we want to find out whether they differ significantly for trait 1, trait A and trait B. We have seen that chi-square generally uses observed frequency and expected frequency. What is given is observed frequency that means 15 people are here, 85 people are there. So, we have the observed frequency F O. Now, we have to compute F E. How do we compute F E? See the formula. How to compute the expected frequency for high on A and high on B? It is 55 multiplied by 70 divided by 250. 55 is the total of high, 70 is also total on high and 250 is n that will give you 15.4. In this table you will see in red the expected frequency computed using the formula which I shared with you just now. So, you have expected frequency and you have observed frequency. Now, you can use the same formula observed frequency minus expected frequency whole square upon F e that is expected frequency. So, you can compute 9 different chi squares and add up that will give you the chi square of the whole sample. Now, once you get that value of chi square as we said earlier you have to refer to table e. Now, let us take a stock how do we go for testing the null hypothesis and using the chi square. First, we must understand that we have data for which we have already stated objective. The first step is to derive hypothesis from your research objective. Now, this hypothesis has to be stated which is called H1 that is alternative hypothesis. Now, if you want to use chi square you want to test that hypothesis please convert that into null hypothesis. So, null hypothesis is stated like there is no significant difference, there is no significant association, there is no significant relationship. In this way we state null hypothesis. Now, this null hypothesis is stated which is denoted as H0. When you state null hypothesis, you also know the expected frequency, expected result. Are we saying there will be a gain? Are we saying when we are saying there is no difference, we expect that it will be on the positive side or it will be on the negative side and you must know that whether we are supposed to use two tailed analysis or one tailed analysis. But please remember that when we use chi square, chi square is used generally for categories or numerical data which is discrete. So, when the, uh, the sample is not distributed normally, then instead of using T ratio we go for chi square. So, generally when the data, the distribution which is not parametric, we use chi-square. So, once you have stated your null hypothesis, you also know that what is the expected frequency in case of say 2 by 2, then you, may, you would be thinking about 50-50. But if you have normally distributed data, then you can say 60 percent lie in between and others lie on both sides of the plus 1 to minus 1 SG. So, this is possible because you know what are your expectations. So, researcher himself or herself must first know what is expected from the data. Nobody else is going to tell you that. You must be very clear what you expect from data. This is your expected frequency. Once you have expected frequency and then you have a table which will give you observed frequency. 
by using observed frequency and expected frequency use the formula and get your chi square value. Once you have that chi square value, you refer to table E. Table E, before referring to table E, you must know what is the degrees of freedom. How do we compute degrees of freedom? Generally, it is n minus 1, but here you will have a table. So, it will be either 2 by 2 or 3 by 2 or 3 by 3 or 4 by 3, whatever. So, you have rows and you have columns. So, degrees of freedom are computed by formula r minus 1 that is rho minus 1 multiplied by c minus 1 that is column minus 1. So, how many rows are there? Minus 1. How many columns are there? Minus 1. Multiply that and you will get a degrees of freedom. So, if your table is 2 by 2 that means 2 minus 1 into 2 minus 1 that is 1. But if you have 3 by 3 that means 3 minus 1 into 3 minus 1 that is 2 multiplied by 2. So, your degrees of freedom is 4. If you have 3 by 2 table that means you have 3 columns and you have 2 rows that means 3 minus 1 is 2 and 2 minus 1 is 1. So, 2 multiplied by 1 is 2. So, your degrees of freedom is 2. Now, when you refer to table E, table E the first column is degrees of freedom. So, you have to see degrees of freedom here and then across the probability is given. You have to take your value and find out where that value will come. That value if you find out this comes in between these two values then try to interpolate. Because many a times you will not get exact uh, number there. It will be between 0 0.3 and 0 0.5 or it will be between 0 0.05 and 0 0.02. So, you have to interpolate and find out the value. Now, this is the probability. If you are interested in 0 0.05 and 0 0.01 only, then any other value of probability is not acceptable. So, if you get 0 0.05, say your value is more than 3.5 and degrees of freedom is 1, then you will get your probability more than 0 0.05. That means, your chi square value is significant at 0 0.05 level. That means, you can reject the null hypothesis which stated there is no difference in observed and expected frequency of variety of categories is not correct. So, we are rejecting the null hypothesis and saying that there is a significant difference in boys and girls or there is a significant difference in trait 1 and trait 2. This confidence will come only if your chi square value is nearly for 0 0.05 or more than that. We have seen today how a statistics which is generally non-parametric, when your data is not distributed normally, when your data is categorical data, when your data is discrete data, you can use chi square to test your null hypothesis. Thank you.